So over the last few weeks, we've done draft strategy videos, picking from spots one through six, and then picking from spots seven through 12. And we did those two sections for one quarterback leagues, and then also for super flex leagues. So we've done four different draft strategy videos about those league types, which I will link all down below. But I wanted to get a little bit more specific with it, right? Because one through six, uh, pick one is not the same as pick six, and pick seven is not the same as pick 12. So today we are doing my favorite draft strategy if you are picking number one overall. So you're at the turn, and the draft that we're actually going to be using is from the number two spot because I kept trying to enter the underdog drafts and they kept giving me the number two or three spots. So I couldn't get the one, but we could still talk through it, and a lot of the same players are available. And I'll give you an insight into like the way I was thinking at the turn regardless. But these spots are different. Next Monday, I'm going to be picking at the turn, but if you're the last pick in your draft, so if you're the 12th spot, 11-ish spot, I want to break it down a little more a little more niche. So this video, we're going to take a look at a draft that I just did. This was a paid draft where I was picking from the two spot. We're going to be talking about what you should be looking to do if you are picking from the turn, the early turn, 101, 102. You'll know what to do next. Tuck them shirts in. Flex them traps. Let's eat. Well, here's a draft board with my team. I was picking from the 102. I don't ask me what the first guy was doing when he picked AJ Brown at the 101. The point remains, I got Jefferson, but normally Jefferson's going to go at the one. If you're at the two, grab Jamar Chase. If you're at the one, grab Jefferson. If you're at the two, grab Jamar Chase. Now, on the way back around, when you are at the 212, 1 you have your choice of really, really high-end dudes at running back and quarterback. And I'm a big proponent of making sure your team is flexible as you are drafting. So if you're hitting the different position types, by the time you get to round six or seven, you're not forcing yourself to pick a specific player or specific position. If you go all wide receiver heavy, all running back heavy, by the time you run out of those slots, like by the time you're around six, seven, you are forcing yourself to draft running backs only or wide receivers only because you haven't drafted any yet. And if you get to the point of the draft where like there's not pocket values, if they're not, you know, the value of the draft is not there during that round, you're going to fuck yourself over. Your team is not going to come out well-rounded. So I like to draft well-rounded teams. And it just so happens that you can typically get a really, really good running back at the turn there. So Derrick Henry was available there. Jonathan Taylor was available there. But I would double tap a high-end RB and a high-end quarterback. Again, these videos, for the most part, are just strategy-based. They are not relating to specific player analysis, but that's where I would go. So the team would be looking like Justin Jefferson, Derrick Henry, or Jonathan Taylor, and then Josh Allen. If Patrick Mahomes fell there, if Jalen Hurts fell there, would be fine with them as well. So your team so far has a wide receiver one, an RB one, and a QB one. And the flexibility here is beautiful because by the time you get to the four or five turn, the amount of flex options available are... Mwah. So I would tailor these picks to fit your league settings best, right? Like if you start three wide receivers and it's full PPR, maybe you want to go back to back wide receivers here. I got no problem with that. I got no problem fading running back until later on into the draft. If your settings dictate you doing that, if you only start two wide receivers and it's like half PPR or standard scoring, I would probably take another running back at the turn here, at least go running back wide receiver. So I took Aaron Jones here and then I took Brandon Ayuk on the way back. But again, you can replace Aaron Jones with Najee Harris or any of the running backs that went after him, Miles Sanders. Damian Pierce, any of the guys that you really like. And same thing with Brandon Ayuk, Drake London, Christian Kirk, but you're getting a rock solid RB2 and a rock solid wide receiver too. Now, sixth round, this this one hurt a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Kyle Pitts is not necessarily a guy I'm looking to draft much of this year. And I was really hoping Dallas Goddard or Darren Waller fell to me at 6'11, but they went at the 6'8 and the 6'9. In this situation, I would have no problem like double tapping wide receivers again if you have, you know, if you start three wide receivers and you have a flex spot, or if you start two wide receivers and have two flex spots, you could start up to four wide receivers I have no problem drafting four wide receivers before you draft your first tight end I also don't have a problem doing that with running backs either because I want to throw up a tweet on the screen that Hayden Winks who works for underdog basically started tweeting out some data from previous years of underdog tournaments and underdog drafts and he was saying like the percentage of weeks where the number one scoring team on underdog had a wide receiver as the flex right people are obsessed with drafting wide receivers in underdog because you start three wide receivers and you start two running backs and then there's one flex spot for it percentage of teams with the best scoring team on a weekly basis, 39% of the time was a wide receiver. So you're talking about more likely than not having a running back as your flex guy. So don't overemphasize the fact that everybody's swinging towards wide receivers and that make you afraid of going with a running back. So looking at the team, like at 6'11", if I double tapped Mike Evans and Tyler Lockett, I would have been happy with that. And then at 8'11", I could have grabbed Evan Ingram. Or at 9'2", I could have grabbed Evan Ingram because he went off the 9'7". Evan Ingram is probably like the last guy in the first nine tiers that I feel comfortable with as my starting tight end. 
And if you want those rankings, we have them all in the draft guide. Just updated literally this morning. Uh, I sent it over to Underdog at like 9 a.m. We have an updated draft guide. We have a few swap outs on the must draft list. We have completely new rankings in one quarterback and super flex rankings. The easiest and the cheapest way for y'all to get the draft guide, which is everything you need for your upcoming fantasy draft, is going to Underdog Fantasy. The link to get to the app is right down below. It'll be the first link in the notes of the video. And if it's your first time on there, you deposit $10 or more and you use promo code BDGE when you do so, they're not only going to double whatever you put down and you can do these best ball drafts with us. We're drafting all the time. We drop links into the Discord, so make sure you're in the Discord free as well. But throw $10 onto Underdog. Use promo code BDGE. They're going to double it and they're going to email you out our draft guide absolutely free. The draft guide will be updated throughout the summer. Every time I update it, I send that PDF to them and then they retroactively send it to the people that have signed up with my code and we'll use that going forward. So this video strategy, there is some strategy stuff within the draft guide as well. But if you want the player rankings and all that kind of stuff, our must draft list or all fade list, the draft guide is the best place to get that. Underdog Fantasy, promo code BDGE. If you're in a state that doesn't do underdog, you can cop the draft guide raw, more expensive at BDGE.shop. So we grabbed Kyle Pitts at 611. Looking back, not proud of the pick, but it just was what it was. And then I grabbed two more wide receivers. We got Tyler Lockett at the 7 2, which I absolutely love. And then Brandon Cooks at the 8 11. Another dude that I really, really like based on where he's getting picked right now at the 8 11. I think he's going to be a really nice impact player for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, he had a shitty year with Houston last year, obviously, but like he wanted no part of that offense. He didn't want to be there anymore. And why would you, based on how the offense operated? Now he's kind of rejuvenating himself in this Dallas offense, which I think is going to end up passing the ball a lot because they're not really adding running backs to the situation over there. And and Dak is there and CD's there and Michael Gallup's coming back from the ACL. So I, I like Brandon Cooks as a sneaky, nice, like wide receiver three flex play. And at this point in the draft, we have all of our slots filled up, right? We have our top QB and Josh Allen. We have Kyle Pitts as our tight end. We've got four rock solid wide receivers, in my opinion, Justin Jefferson, Brandon Ayuk, Tyler Lockett, Brandon Cooks, and then Derrick Henry, Aaron Jones as our running back. So there's not really a hole in our lineup. Don't fucking say anything about Kyle Pitts. At this point, we're kind of free and flexible to start nailing more depth at the flex. And I grab Brian Robinson, who's a guy that's like really really quickly rising up my rankings. I think it's, I had this idea of him just being like this unofficial. I didn't love him coming out of college. I knew he was like a well-rounded player that could stay on the field for all three downs. And then we saw him be kind of inefficient last year for the most part. And I, I want to write a decent amount of that off because of the way that he entered the year, obviously. And he's a dude who caught 35 passes his final year at Alabama. Like he is a good pass catcher. And all the reports out of camp are like, he's he's really digging in over there. And I have, I have a weird feeling that he could be the workhorse there because he won the job last summer before getting shot. And I think he will go into the year as the clear starter there. So Brian Robinson grabbed Khalil Herbert in the next round and then continue to just stack up depth. Tyler Boyd, Jamal Williams, Jordan. Jordan Love is my backup QB, Juwan Johnson, Devontae Parker, Michael Wilson, Luke Musgrave, Chase Claypool. So on underdog, you do 18 rounds, no kickers, no defense. It's best ball. So if you're new to best ball, basically you draft an 18 man roster and you're only starting quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end and a flex. So you're starting eight. So you have 10 bench spots and it automatically starts the best players at every position for you each week. It's $3 minimum to enter a draft. There's $3, $5 up to like $1,000 buying drafts. And at the end of the year, you come back and you either won money or you didn't win money. All based on drafting. If you're good at drafting, you're going to win a lot of money on this site. But there's no waiver wire. There's no sit starts. It's just the best players on your roster get put into the lineup each week. Drafting from the turn, obviously I was at two, but same players are pretty much available there. I don't think the strategy shifts based on, you know, one ADP spot. So at the one, you're drafting just Jefferson. At the two, three turn, you're usually able to get a high-end running back that falls and a high-end quarterback. Four or five turn, we're looking at flex plays. ETN, Aaron Jones, DJ Moore, Brandon Ayuk, Najee Harris, Drake London, Christian Kirk, Miles Sanders, Damian Pierce, Cam Akers. I know those guys are going later, but here's the thing about being at the turn. The one strategy difference you kind of have to have is you don't have the luxury of waiting for value to drop to you. You kind of have to get your guys and build your team as it comes to you. You know, you don't really have the luxury of being like, all right, you know, hopefully one of these three guys in this tier fall to me. You kind of just have to grab your guys. So if you're at the 5-1, you're really high on Damian Pierce, but he goes at like the 5 5, 11 to 6 3 every time. Yeah, you're drafting him eight spots ahead of ADP. You either do that or there's no chance of you getting him on your team. So if you have guys that you really believe in, grab them at the turn. Fuck them. When it comes to the tight ends, like, yeah, I really like to grab one of the top seven, eight guys at the six, seven turn. Sometimes, like this one, it didn't work out. I would be okay pivoting off that, doubling down on back to back flex plays again, and then grabbing Evan Ingram at the eight, nine turn. And then after that, you're just kind of padding depth. Since you have high end at every position, there's not any like real concern. Like, I don't need a backup quarterback 
quarterback or Josh Allen because Josh Allen is going to be my best performing player week in and week out. So we'll do this same video next week, but for the 11-12 turn. So if you're drafting at the end of the drafts, I got you. And if you're drafting anywhere in drafts, I also got you because our draft guide is available right now for purchase. BDG.shop, but for the cheapest and best way to get it and the best way to support our brand for sure is by going to Underdog Fantasy. Link to download the app down below. Use promo code BDGE. When you deposit for the first time, $10 all the way up to $100 are going to double whatever you put down on your accounts. I love you and I'll see y'all tomorrow.